The champ returned a winner. The Paddock Prince returns to the dish, to dish with me, Ed DeRosa, at HRN HQ. And up in Oldham County is the Prince himself, David Levich. Got a new top 10, David. Before we get to that, though, just in general, on Twitter, you threw down the gauntlet. You said, it's time to get serious. What does that mean for you? Um, we got a lot of packages coming up. We got Keeneland. I think that's what you're referring to. We got, is that what you're referring to? Uh, I don't know if you meant like you're going to handicap harder than you ever before more product or what? That's why. I'm oh asking. yeah. Yeah. We got Keeneland coming up. We got aqueduct spring meet coming up. We got Tampa Bay Derby this weekend. Um, we got a good Oakland card. So yeah, it's, it's kind of getting to the, we had our first fifth. Well, I shouldn't say our first, I guess it was our second or third 50 point um, derby prep race. Forte won that obviously, but yeah, it's definitely time to get serious. Spring's coming up. Naira's first turf race, I think is April 7th. Mm. So we're getting closer and closer to derby. And that means it's time to get serious because there's a lot of good stuff coming up. And uh, we're in the final days of the Mahoning uh, calendar. So look for that. Um, I didn't know that. Pay out there. I didn't pick six. That. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I don't follow the Mahoney calendar, but I might play the pick six if you I'll, like it. I'll get you to throw me a Venmo. Uh, more importantly, though, Forte, as I said, did return a winner. The champ is back to use the cliche. You moved him up to second. This is starting to take shape, David, and we're going to get uh, a lot more answers this weekend because you're number one scheduled to reappear in the Tampa Bay Derby Saturday. Yeah, I mean, I think most people have Forte at one right now. I mean, Practical Move, who I got four, ran a faster figure. But I think Forte, I mean, he looked so good off the layoff the other day. I thought they both looked good. In the, uh, no, I thought they both looked great. I'm just – Forte, just the way he does things, he just looks so effortless in that race. Um Looks like distance won't be an issue, at least nine furlongs when they go to the Florida Derby. But, yeah, Tapa Trice is running in the Tampa Bay Derby this weekend. I don't know how great the race is going to be competition-wise, but I really liked his allowance win, and I'm going to keep him at one for now, but we'll see because there could be some moving around after this weekend. But um, I, right now he's my tentative number one. Understandable, and I think uh, I think we'd see a big performance. And if we do, there is a Derby future wager this weekend. I don't think we're, he could run off the screen. Forte is going to be the individual favorite. Maybe at the point now where he'll take more money than the field since the former Bafferts are included. But Tappet Trice, I think, could be the clear second choice with a big win over Arabian Night. I'm hoping that's what happened. I, I think there's an opportunity in this pool, especially if Tappet Trice wins big, to bet either Forte or Practical Move. Yeah, because the Arabian Night is kind of starting. Uh, I mean, I think he worked the other day five furlongs, but he's kind of almost being forgotten about at this point. You're, he's going to have one race before the Derby, um, probably in the Santa Anita Derby, I'd assume. Maybe they'll go to the Arkansas Derby since he won the um, Southwest. So, yeah, he's kind of been forgotten about it. will be interesting to see if Tappet Trice has a big blowout race, what his price will be compared to Forte. But I'm not a big Derby Futures person, but let's say that Tappet Trice does run off the screen this weekend, and you might get a better price on him now than you would in the Derby because some of these horses like him and Forte are probably going to win their last preps, I would say. So if Forte goes to the Florida Derby and runs a 103 buyer and romps, he's probably going to be, I would, depending on what Arabian Night does, a heavy favorite in terms of a Derby Derby race with 20 horses in it. Yeah, I'm, uh, I've – I have tempered enthusiasm for the future wager. I think tying your money up at this point for two months, but especially looking at some of the pools that are six months out, you really need to demand even a better price than you think the fair odds are. I do think that could happen with Forte, but if not more than willing to sit on my hands, but practical move he's in with 50 points. So to me, that's enticing. Uh, a horse like, I'm going to bring the, your uh, top 10 up again, but a horse like Rocket Can, who is in, uh, and yeah, he was no match for Forte. Clearly the, the winner was best in the Fountain of Youth, but Rocket Can has impressed me. He's always running at the end. Bill Mott, like to me, that's a horse, like, you know, he's in the gate. And if, if he ends up, what, 35 to 1, 30 to 1 this time, because people want to bet the horses they know have flashed even better talent. 
he just has the feel of a horse that come Derby Day might be 15 to 1. Uh, and you locked in a better price. So I, I'm eager to see this pool more than any other to date, uh, but certainly, like you, uh, sensitivity in a, it, it is very high. Well, even if you look at this list, if, the horse I have fifth, like Hit Show, he's going to show up in the wood, it seems like, even though Cox said he could go some other races. He's another horse that could offer some value. Instant Coffee, who – he's not hurt, is he? I mean, I haven't heard about him in a uh, while. I'm taking sure. their time, yeah. I don't know where he's showing up, but he's he's still in training. Yeah, he won the LeCompte, I think, was his last race. I think yeah. it's his first one. Yeah, so he, um, he's been kind of forgotten about a little, but he obviously is a horseshoe shown town. And, yeah, Rocket can. He kind of always shows up since since they started running in two turns. He's kind of, you know, obviously he won the um, Holy Bull and then ran a second in the Fountain of Youth. But he's a nice underneath horse that, I mean, if he's 40 to 1 in the pool and you like him, he's consistent. So it wouldn't be a bad idea, I guess, to put a few bucks on him. Now, uh, we don't have either of us have top tens for the Oaks, but that is a future Ooh. wager this weekend as well. Not necessarily curious uh, top contenders at this point. That's a race that definitely coalesces more, a lot closer to it than the Derby does. But I did want to ask your level of forgiveness because we've seen Wonder Wheel and Julia Shining both at Tampa and then Hoosier Philly lay, lay some pretty significant eggs uh, in their return races. A Julia Shining just has never been that fast. Wonder Wheel's the defending champ. Hoosier Philly's faster than Molitor best, if you believe the rag is in. Super disappointing, though, last out. Do you see any three of those rebounding, or is it wide open? The Oaks is very interesting because I was not a big Hoosier Philly fan. I'm a buyer person. Her buyers were not great. I mean, they were okay for a two-year-old in the fall, but yeah. they she was very overhyped because she was winning by five links, geared down, whatever you want to say, but – then she comes back against better horses, throws in a little bit of a clunker. I guess you can forgive her one time for that, but she did run well on debut, so she's shown the ability to run fresh. So I guess in the um, Fairgrounds Oaks, I guess we'll have to see what she does. Wonder Wheel, I, I mean, I'm sure you saw Leave No Trace the other day at Gulfstream. Obviously, I think something went amiss, but the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies is not looking too strong right now. No. Um Chop Chop was in that race. She was a favorite. She didn't run well in the Breeders' Cup. She hasn't really come back to do much. Wonder Wheel came back and lost to a horse she shouldn't have lost to. Um, so I'm kind of – I'm not off those two, but I know Julia Shining is slow on paper, but she actually did not run that bad in the um, – what's that race called? The Sun Coast against Wonder Wheel. The track was a little speed favoring that day, and she was wide. The problem with her is she is literally in a drive the entire race, which is a little odd. So in the, I think they're both running in the Ashland Wonder Wheel and uh, Julia Shining. I think that race will give us a better gauge on those. And then there's Wet Paint, who only won, has only won on a wet track. So <laughs> it's so hopefully in the final prep at Oakland, it's a dry track to see what she could show on a dry track. Because obviously if it's a wet track, she's good. But I think the Oaks is. And then Baffert's horse, um, what's that horse's name that just won? He didn't transfer, so I guess she can't run in the Oaks. Is it the same rules? Uh, that's a great question. I Bazia. I don't think it's the same rules because the nomination's a little different. Now, the Oaks does have a, a nomination similar to Triple Crown, uh, but that's later. It might even be this week. I'm not sure. But I don't believe they put the same proviso on. She'll have to be transferred before the final prep, though, to get points. Yeah. That's for sure. Well, I didn't know because she – Baffert – Kept her and her his name the other day in the Santa Isab Isabel whatever that race was. So um, I guess she's a horse to watch if they transfer her for her last race. She's like four for four, hasn't run crazy speed figures, but she is four for four. Yeah, and none of them have though, so that that at least no. uh, a level playing field. Uh, but yeah, it's a it's an interesting race and eager to to see who ends up being in the future wager itself and how forgiving the fans are of those losses. I, I would think Hoosier Philly might actually still be the favorite uh, off that rough effort. Uh, there are some excuses. I know she came back to training a little later than they would have liked and, you know, figured if we're going to have a ready for Oaks and they nominated her the triple crown that they wanted to get the race into her and maybe it backfired, maybe not. Like you said, we'll see in the fairgrounds Oaks, but yeah. Um, and I'm not waiting for being her, there but for the hype she had. It was kind of, she kind of, she was not some was superstar that was running 90 buyers. She was running 70 buyers, yeah. 75 buyers. 
So when she comes back, she didn't run great. She stumbled a little, but good horses overcome that stuff in short fields. And I'm not saying she's not a good horse, but she should have run better, made a better run in the final furlong. So, yeah, I guess we'll see in the fairgrounds. Oaks. And if she does win, she probably will be the Oaks favorite unless there's a horse that runs a crit. If Wet Paint wins her last prep, I would probably say she'll probably be right. the favorite. Yeah, just a bet, better three-year-old form overall. Uh, so Tampa sheet Saturday? We got Tampa. We got Gulfstream, who probably, I think, has 77 races again on Saturday. So. Yeah, post time yeah. 9 a.m. We need those four Tapita races going five furlongs on the Saturday card. Um, we'll have Tampa, and then I'm just going to do the late pick five with the return of Secret Oath and Clary Air in the Azari. That is uh, – that is – that's a barn burner. Uh, good, good for Oakland getting that field together. I'm sure a lot of uh, speed in the apple too. Blossom. It looks like a, it's going to be a, a well run race, real closers, real speed. So it looks like a, a true race that will the best horse should win. It's not going to be one of those phony, no paced races. It looks like everyone's going to have their fair shot to win. Love it. And when's uh, what's the target for Nest? I think she's running the double dog dare. I saw the same That's thing right. they did with. The same thing they did with Malathot. Yeah. So yeah, you got her, Clarier, um, Secret Oath. Did the, I don't know? Did the California horse come back that almost won the Breeders' She's Cup? She's coming back. Yeah, they pulled her from the sale. So you got her coming back. So you basically you have four out of the five best fillies from last fillies. And yeah. From last no, you have. Uh, I think that's four of the top five from the distaff. Yeah, Malathot's the only one. Winner certainly back, so. in her retirement. So. Yeah. So that looks like the division that's going to be. You know, has horses coming back because obviously the classic division after charge its race the other day is a little up for grabs at this point. A little bit. Although uh, the Pegasus, key race. Pegasus Stiletto Boy. Yeah. Ken DeSormo. That was a fantastic ride to take off the pace like that. It was it was a very good ride. He's uh, When he's on, he's, he's, I mean, maybe the best. It's cool to see other trainers win too, besides Pletcher, Baffert, right. Cox. It's nice to see, you know, the lesser guys who don't have as many good horses like that win races like that. Amen. All right. Well, busy weekend ahead. Uh, one of many to come uh, throughout the racing season. Tampa Bay, Golfstream, Oakland Pick Five, picks.horseracingnation.com. We'll dish next week. Yep, and then you got the monthly packages and all that. If you use Prince 2023, you get half off just one time, though, so use it wisely. Use it wisely. All right. You're one time, one time. He's David Lovich. I'm Ed DeRosa. Good luck.